The world is watching in horror as Russian artillery has devastated Ukrainian cities and Ukrainian lives seemingly with impunity. The US and the international community have accused Russia of war crimes in Ukraine. But what has been difficult is tying specific generals to specific crimes, the key to actually carrying out war crimes prosecutions. In Kharkiv, CNN has seen the aftermath of attacks using indiscriminate cluster munitions, a war crime. In a two-month-long investigation, CNN can reveal the commander responsible for these attacks and the string of atrocities he's committed, not just in Russia's latest war in Ukraine, but also in the 2014 war in Donbass and in Syria. Chief International Investigative Correspondent Nema Elbegir has this exclusive report. You might find some of the images disturbing. A devastation of civilian homes and lives. Throughout the last two months, we have witnessed atrocities in Ukraine. More mortar strikes very, very close. They want us to start moving. While we know these are Russian actions, it's been difficult to draw a direct line from individual atrocities to a specific Russian commander until now. CNN can exclusively reveal that this man, Colonel General Alexander Zhiravlov, commander of the Western Military District, is the commander responsible for this. Munitions targeting civilians in the city of Kharkiv, East Ukraine. A war crime under international law. You can see more artillery rockets apparently be firing from Russian territory towards the territory, I would say, around Kharkiv. I don't know if you can hear this right now. This is the start of the war. CNN's senior international correspondent Fred Pleitkin witnessed artillery being fired from inside Russia within Zhiravlov's district towards the city of Kharkiv. Sam Kiley was in Kharkiv and could hear the shelling moments later. Could feel the concussion against the glass. Now that... We soon learned from experts these were smirch rockets. Built in the early 80s, at the end of the Soviet era, this multiple rocket launch system, scorching the earth as it fires, is a pride and joy of Russia's armaments, as seen here in this propaganda documentary. This is what they're capable of delivering. Cluster bombs. One smirch rocket releasing many smaller explosives, scattering bombs, amplifying the devastation. These attacks, captured on social media both in Kharkiv and both from the same day, are a clear example of their indiscriminate nature. When used in this fashion against civilians, it's considered a war crime. The use of smirch rockets are key in our findings of who is responsible, because they are unique to one unit here, one commander. After months of forensic work, we can reveal the trail of evidence leading to Zhiravlov. Using social media videos to guide us, we return to some of the scenes of the attacks. Focusing on February 27th, when three civilian targets were hit and eight more on February 28th. We start in the Pavlova Pola neighborhood of Kharkiv. This is shrapnel from those missiles that fell on our neighborhood, Lilia tells us. This shrapnel was found in one of the rooms. Lilia takes us to see a smirch rocket that fell 200 yards from her apartment block in this once affluent area. I remember the whistling sound of the missiles. I know that the missiles were flying and that they were accompanied by fighter planes or drones. You can see the hole that it came through. You can see the way that the rocket buckled when it hit the car. You can also very clearly see that this is a smudge. It's not the only rocket coming from this direction on this day. Less than a half mile down the road, another hit. Helping to situate us, this kiosk, that water cooler, they're key landmarks. The bodies landed here down this road. Those blue doors you see, that's where the cluster munition shrapnel embedded. This video filmed moments after the attack where four people, including a child, were killed. Another smirch launching cluster bombs. We know this because one of the unexploded bombs was found only 280 yards away. Notice the date. 2019. Russia stopped selling arms to Ukraine in 2014. This confirms this is a Russian cluster bomb.
One and a half miles away, another strike, more suffering, and no sign of any legitimate military targets. People were queuing for food, and then something just hit. People started running here, she says. This is the exact moment of impact. Look at it again, frame by frame, you can see the scale of the rocket and proximity to innocent civilians. We are here in Kharkiv. Notice the five hits along this line from the 28th. They're pretty much in a line, apart from three here, which line up with the hits from February 27th. We can trace these lines 24 miles to a point of convergence here, across the border in Russia, well within the range of a smudge rocket. Where we have a satellite image from the 27th showing the launching position. Notice the plume of smoke and the telltale burn marks of a smudge launch here, here and here. In collaboration with the Center for Information Resilience, we can also tell you who is firing from this position. The 79th Russian Artillery Brigade. Part of the Western Military District, which borders Ukraine and is under the command of Zhuravlov. According to open source information reviewed by CNN, military experts and intelligence sources, they are the only unit in this district equipped to launch smirch rockets. And only the commander has the authority to order the 79th Artillery Brigade to launch the rockets. And this was just in the two days that we analyzed. These stills shared exclusively with CNN by Kharkiv prosecutors show the Russian armaments raining death, among them many smirch remnants. Experts say this is among the heaviest bombardments in recent history. Zhuravlov is no stranger to these brutal tactics, atrocities targeting civilians. They're very similar to what we saw in Syria in 2016. So it shouldn't come as a surprise that Zhuravlov also led Russian troops during the siege of Aleppo. He is the architect of the devastation you see here. For leveling Aleppo, he was awarded the highest honor granted to Russian officers, hero of the Russian Federation. Yet Syrians have documented his war crimes. Russian? Despite the direct line from the impunity the world afforded Russia in Syria to the atrocities suffered by civilians here today, the question remains, what will the world do to stop this cycle? Well, we have asked the uh, Russian Ministry of Defense for comment as well as the Kremlin, but we're yet to receive a response. CNN shared uh, with the US State Department our findings, noting the lack of action taking against uh, the colonel there and other Russian generals, they would not comment on these specific acts or any other information reviewed, uh, but said they continue to track and assess war crimes and reports of ongoing violence and human rights abuses. Uh, Nema is with me now. Um, this guy isn't on the sanctions list, but we can assume that all the authorities in the West know who he is. Well, after the siege of Aleppo, he was very publicly congratulated and awarded the highest Russian military honor. In, um, so there is absolutely no way, specifically for his role in besieging Aleppo. So there is, there is no way that the world was not aware. The question is, did the world care? And I think that's the question that so many of the prosecutors and the sources that we've been talking to in Ukraine are grappling with. If it has been known for so long that Russia was perfecting what actually Colonel General Zhuravlov called at the time uh, ingenuity and expertise in atrocities, um, our word, not, mm. not the Russian word, how have they been allowed to operate in it with impunity for so long? Mm. And, and whose responsibility is it? Whose responsibility is it? Well, the global community, the same people who are now saying we want war crimes prosecutions. Mm. And that's what we're hearing from human rights lawyers and activists. If you had had war crimes prosecutions for what Russia did in Syria, perhaps you would not yeah. see what's happening in Ukraine now. Nema, thank you very much indeed.